Welcome to Concordia Theological Seminary as we uh, have our weekly podcast. We are working now through the Gospel of Luke. We are at proper 6, that's Luke chapter 7, verses, verse 36, all the way up to chapter 8, verse 3. And here's the story first of the sinful woman. It's classic Luke. Um, we know in the Gospel of Luke he's concerned with um, women. Um, one of the charges in the Gospel of Luke is that he eats and drinks with tax collectors and sinners. We know that um, he eats with Levi or Matthew the tax collector and his friends, he eats and drinks with them. And now we see him interacting with a person who is supposedly righteous and also a woman who shows her righteousness, who receives forgiveness because she claims her place as a sinner and she gives honor to Christ as a Savior. So we begin in um, chapter 7, verse 36, that there was, um, there was a certain uh, person of the Pharisees who asked that he might eat with him, fage. So here we go, gonna change this here. Asked that he might eat with him. And this is interesting because uh, we remember in the Gospel of Matthew that um, there will be those who cry out on the last day saying, we ate with you, Lord. Um, we drank with you. We were at the table with you. And they will not yet be invited into the heavenly feast. So there are different kinds of fellowship in the Gospel. And here we see a Pharisee who is inviting Jesus to eat with him. Now, it does remind us, you know, as, when you go as into a congregation as a pastor, it often happens that uh, sometimes the first people who invite you over, not everybody who invites you over wants to hear the gospel. Sometimes they invite you over because they actually want to get your take on things, but perhaps even to own you. They might give you gifts. They give, I can think of preachers who get gifts from people who are wealthy. And it's not because they love you, it's because they want to, to own you, to control you, to make you into their court theologian. Well, this is a Pharisee who asked to eat with Jesus. And as it happened, there was a woman who heard about this. And she's not, so we at first, uh, there was a certain woman in the city and she was a sinner. Now, of course, we're all sinners. Um, but this is, this is a code for saying she uh, was a prostitute, evidently. Uh, she was a woman who had engaged in maybe sin professionally. And, um, but she knew that he was going to be in the house of the Pharisees. So she had heard about that. So what did she do? She purchased or she brought an alabaster, that's an alabaster jar of, there's the M here and the myrrh. She brought a jar of myrrh. This is expensive ointment. So she knows Jesus is going to be there and she prepares for his coming. Now, at, in verse 38, she sees, she's standing there in back of him, but she's actually at, and this is key for the Gospel of Luke, she's standing at his feet, or she's at his feet. So, and this is in the Gospel of Luke, those who lower themselves are lifted up. Those who raise themselves up are always brought down. Uh, this is the prophecy that the Messiah would become, uh, that Simeon said this, for the rising and fall of many in Israel. And she's there, she's there weeping. And um, Remember, those who weep, those who mourn, will be comforted. This is a woman who is weeping, and she's not just sad, but she is weeping, as we shall see, over her sins. And uh, with her tears, what she does, it's really remarkable, that with her tears there, she began to wet his feet, to rain down her tears upon, upon our Lord's feet. And then, and then with her, with, her, with her hair, that's remarkable, she then proceeded to dry his head. So it's, it's, uh, she takes her 
most honorable part, her head, and then the hair, which is her glory. And then she proceeds to wipe clean the feet of Jesus with her hair. It's really a beautiful picture. And then, then to add to this kind of, just, it's picture of love here, what she does is she katafile, she kisses, she kisses his feet. I mean, this is remarkable. So we can think the lowest part. It, I wonder if St. Paul was thinking about this when he said, how beautiful are the feet uh, of the messengers who bring you the good news of the gospel in Romans chapter 10. This woman recognized Jesus for who he was. She saw in him a savior, one who preached the good news of salvation. And so grateful was she that she anointed his feet with, uh, with precious myrrh and she dried his uh, feet. And here, here we are, that having wet his feet with tears, having dried his, uh, having, having kissed his feet, then she anointed um, him with myrrh. Now the Pharisee, now uh, who had invited him, so you see at this point the Pharisee who had summoned, here it's summoned or invited, the Pharisee actually thought he was somehow, I suppose, in control of the feast or he was the leader of the feast. He looked at this and he said to himself, um, when you look at verse 39, he, he said to himself, if, if this man, it's a little bit, we could use a divider here, if this man was a prophet, well then he would have known, kaipote, uh, what kind of a woman this was who touched him. Um, this, so the Pharisee is thinking, um, when the Messiah comes, he will reveal all things, and he will know all things. But if he did know all things, why is he allowing this kind of a woman uh, to touch him? Um, if he was indeed a prophet, in, in, to touch him means, uh, isn't Jesus in fact being sullied by this sin? Isn't in some way this woman's sin going to rub off on him? I think that's what the Pharisee is thinking. Uh, but Jesus knows what he's thinking, the Pharisee. And so Jesus takes control of the situation. And Jesus said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And Simon answers, teacher, say it. And so he said it. And what happens is Jesus begins with a little story to illustrate the situation. So um, there were... Uh, there were two people. Who, there were two people who owed, or two debtors who owed uh, a certain amount of money to someone, and one of them owed. Now this is good. Fifty denaria, and the other owed five hundred. So there's a nice symmetry, or the you see the the pentaconta. The 500 and the 50, a um, certain man owed 500 and a, the other man owed 50 denaria. Now, which one of these, um, now, if you look at verse 42, he says, when they could not pay, when they were, when not having, that, not having, genitive absolute, being able to pay, when both of them were not able to pay, he Ekarisita, he gave grace to our dative, he gave grace to both of them, he forgave both of them. Now, given that scenario of a man owing 50 and a man owing 100, uh, which do you suppose, Jesus asked, which of these two, agape say, loved him more? Um, well, what would you think? Now, Simon I guess to his credit, and you know, maybe Simon, because the very fact that he's named, and there's a kind of honesty here, perhaps, you kind of wonder whether he, uh, he did come around to the faith, that he's the kind of person 
that we might have seen in the book of Acts, a former Pharisee who became a Christian, because he does answer honestly, and uh, he says, Hupa Lumbano, I suppose the one who he graced, car is sato, the one he forgave more. And Jesus is uh, playing fairly with Simon and Orthos. We love that word as good Lutherans. Rightly, you have answered. And now the lesson's going to continue. So yeah, if, if you were... Uh, if you were forgiven a debt of 500 denarii, 500 days of work compared to over a year, compared to 50, that would mean a lot. And you'd appreciate it an awful lot. And so to continue this lesson in verse 44, he turns to the, towards the woman. Now this is a great kind of Lucan phrase. He turns um, towards the woman. Um, this is the same word that's used when Jesus turns towards Peter. Remember, Peter is going to deny Jesus three times. And Jesus turns towards Peter, and it causes Peter to turn and then to repent. So Jesus turns towards the woman, and then he, F.A., he says to Simon, um, look at... Uh, Look at this woman. Um, do you see her? Now consider, consider what has happened here from the very beginning, Simon. Turn towards, do you see this woman? I came into the house. Now what, what happened? Well, when I came, um, uke, you did not, dokes, you did not give water to me for the feet. You did not give water for my feet. There was no, uh, this, was, this was the basic job of what a host is to do. Jesus came in with dirty feet and Simon, I guess, was above it all. He showed no hospitality to our Lord, not even to give water to for, for his feet. Now compare that to the woman in verse 44, you see that, um, that, that she, on the other hand, she oute with her feet. She rained down tears with her feet, uh, with, or, with, up, or, upon my feet. I'm sorry about that. She rained down tears and she washed my feet and with her hair she dried them and... Uh, now, that's the first part. Now, the second part is um, a kiss you did not give me. So we would say when a person enters into a house, we would uh, probably rise up and we would greet them at the door. Uh, we would maybe give them a handshake or perhaps a hug. And in, this, in the Mediterranean, if somebody comes into the house, you greet them with a kiss the opposite would be, I suppose, you just sit there in your chair as if you're the king and you wait for people to come to you. But that's not showing hospitality. But Jesus says, when I came into the house, you didn't give me a kiss. But this one, uh, from the time that I entered in, she did not delepon, she did not cease kissing me. Well, not just kissing me, but kissing, kissing my feet. And with oil, you did not anoint my head. So there's a comparison. With oil, alayo, you did not anoint my head. You did not alayp sas, my head. But this one, with myrrh. So this is an expensive. Uh, anointing the head with oil would be a simple act of hospitality. Kind of like when you come into the house today, I suppose, offer me a drink. Can I get you something? A glass of wine? May I get you some lemonade? Something like that. But with oil, um, you did not anoint my head. But this one, this woman, with myrrh, which is expensive, she not only anointed my head, but she anointed my feet, which is just remarkable. 
So for the sake of this, on account of this, I say to you, um, the many sins of her, verse 47, um, if you look at this here, her sins, the sins of her, which are many, her many sins are forgiven. Um, f now, why, why is that? Well, he puts it this way. Um, for the one who, for she loved much, for, here we go, for she, lo for she loved much. For the one who is uh, forgiven a little, loves a little. And this is the way it is, isn't it? Um, you know, <laughs> when you don't think you need forgiveness, then I suppose in some ways you just go living your life in self-satisfaction, in righteousness. Um, you think that you're good. On the other hand, when you've fallen, when you've fallen into sin, when you've fallen into debt, and somebody cares for you, your attitude changes, and this woman's attitude this woman's attitude changed because she recognized, in fact, that she had been forgiven greatly. And um, so, so at this part, verse 49, they began, those who were dining with him, what was their reaction? It says, who is this? Um, who is this that forgives sins? And... The story ends with verse 50. Um, he said, Depros, he said to the woman, your faith has saved you, go in peace. And this is, uh, when we th think about salvation, what saved the woman? In her humility, she came to Christ. In her humility, she trusted Jesus. In her humility, she had faith. And of course, Christ saved her. Her faith saved her. Christ saved her. Um, this is an example, I think, she is an example of faith for all of us, that when we, come to the, when we come to church, we say, I, a poor, miserable sinner. We don't raise ourselves up. We recognize who we are. And who we are, we are fallen sinners, each and every one of us. And we get down on our knees. We lower ourselves because we recognize who we are. But as we lower ourselves, Christ lifts us up. If we raise ourselves up, if we're haughty, if we're full of pride, well then we're not, we can't be in that posture, recipients of forgiveness. So today I suppose we thank God when He brings us low, when He causes us to see our sins, to see ourselves as we really are, because then we could be like the woman and give Jesus the honor that He really deserves because He Himself lowered Himself for us. He Himself washed our feet. He himself was brought down to death so that we might be raised up forever. So today is a day to celebrate with the woman, to recognize our lowliness, and to receive with Jesus our salvation. Well, thank you for being with us again today and God's blessings upon your week.